Hi. So in previous session, we have learned a lot about the PRR mediated uh, uh, antiviral immune response, which is mainly the interferon dependent. Okay. Now in this session, I will discuss about the uh, uh, interferon independent processes by which uh, the viral replication is checked. Okay. In fact, in this session, I am going to talk a uh, few of my work, my own work, my own laboratory work which very clearly demonstrate that uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, some of this uh, uh, post transcriptional regulators, they play a very important role in checking the viral replication. Okay. So let's begin. So here, this is a very uh, simple uh, schematic uh, and this is true for many, uh, many other organism. There are some, this is uh, some small interference RNA which plays a very important role in defense against the viruses. Basically, these small interf uh, interference uh, RNA, they interact with the genome of virus, particularly RNA viruses and then this will trigger basically the cleavage of the target RNA. Okay. So, this is uh, one way. And this thing I will elaborate uh, more in subsequent uh, slides. In, in, in mammals also there is a, uh, or in human, there is also uh, expression of these small uh, RNA, which we call it as a micro RNA. Okay. Here you can see the biogenesis pathway and uh, uh, towards end there will be a generation of mature micro RNA. Okay. And this mature micro RNA is basically the, the key function of this micro RNA is to regulate the gene expression at transcript level. Okay. So, they, these micro RNA basically interact with the uh, transcript, gene transcript or mRNA. And as you can see that they 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 basically play a very important role in in uh, reducing the expression of uh, this uh, uh, transcript or mrna and this is basically achieved by one uh, one protein complex which we call it as a risk complex okay this risk is a risc it's a rna induced silencing complex okay and this risk complex is uh, basically consists of several protein, including one very important protein known as AGO2, okay, agonate 2, okay. So, this agonate 2 basically uh, facilitate the bridging or uh, binding of a transcript, okay, with the micro RNA, okay. And then once uh, this, this, this risk complex is uh, formed, then there will be a, uh, there could be a several fate. H here you can see that the mRNA can be, uh, the target mRNA, mRNA can be cleaved, okay. Another is there could be a translational repression, okay. There, so, they will be, so if there is a actively transcribing, uh, translating uh, mRNA, then they will kind of uh, a bump, okay. They, they, the, the translational machinery cannot move if it is, it is there, okay. This can also trigger the mRNA deadenylation and that deadenylation basically uh, make the mRNA unstable, okay. So, these are the ways by which these micro RNA act in, 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 in the cell and they are playing very important role in regulation of uh, uh, regulation at uh, uh, transcriptional level or post transcriptional, they are uh, post transcriptional regulator, and they are kind of fine tuners, okay, for, for the expression of a particular gene, okay. And uh, they, these, these micro RNA is uh, uh, originally discovered as a regulator for the gene, but uh, we have uh, uh, found out that besides regulating the transcripts, okay, uh, they are playing very important role in 
in virus defense. Okay. Here you can see this work. Here you can see that uh, the, the RNA from RNA virus, okay, this basically uh, uh, sensed by the uh, rigai as you have studied a lot, which is translated from the rigai transcript. Okay, this rigai uh, basically senses this RNA molecule, okay, viral RNA molecule, and this rigai protein is synthesized from transcript of rigai. Okay, and upon sensing of this viral RNA by rigai, it will induce the pro-inflammatory cytokine and type 1 interferon that you know very well. Okay. Here we found out that this uh, viral RNA, when it, it goes inside the cell, it induces the expression of uh, some microRNA. Okay. And this microRNA uh, is, uh, there are several microRNA among these microRNA, one microRNA is there known as microRNA 485 and this microRNA 485 basically plays a very important role in regulating the transcript of rigai. Okay. Here you can see in, in this schematic, this microRNA can interact with rigai. Okay. Here you can uh, here you can see the structure of gene in, in this, uh, in this uh, experimental results. Okay. So, this microRNA can bind to the two regions. Here one more important information I missed in previous slide. Generally, these microRNA bind with 3 prime UTR okay, of the gene in general. Okay. In, in rare cases, this uh, microRNA can bind to the 5 prime UTR, but in general, it is binding to the 3 prime UTR and then that uh, by binding, it regulate the uh, translation of uh, uh, the transcript. Okay. Okay. Let us come back. So, here you can see that this microRNA 485 can bind with the 3 prime UTR and then this is reducing the expression of uh, transcript. Okay. So, when this is the situation, in this situation, if you infect the cells with viruses, so what will happen? The simple thing is that there will be a more load of viruses. Okay. So, because the expression of this rigai is reduced, so expression of rigai is reduced, it means there will be a reduction in production of antiviral uh, cytokine, that is inflammatory cytokine as well as type 1 interferon. So, so, if this down regulation is there, then there will be a more increase in uh, amount of viruses okay, in the cell. If you, in this scenario, if you infect the cells with viruses, then there will be an increase in amount of viruses. As you can see in this, uh, uh, this experimental data, okay, when we have introduced this microRNA, here P8485 is just a plasmid which is expressing the uh, microRNA 485 okay, inside the cell. So, when we introduce this thing, then there is an increase in viral load. Here you can see that NDV RNA, this is, we have measured the virus specific RNA, so which is very much high. Okay. In, in, uh, so, this is slide basically show various kind of experiment and here the overall conclusion from this experiment is there will be enhance in the viral replication. Okay. So, we perform this experiment with uh, different viruses. Here you can see that there is a NDV virus result. We have performed with many other viruses. We also perform this experiment with influenza virus. Okay. So, when we have uh, performed this experiment with influenza virus, very surprisingly, it's it's a it's a serendipitous uh, discovery. Okay, it's a discovery by chance. We found out that this when we infected the cells with influenza virus, which contained the microRNA 485. Initially, there is an increase in viral load. The cell look uh, not so healthy initially, and after some time, the cell looks very healthy. Okay. So, here you can see that at early time point, 
there is an increase in viral load. Cell are unhealthy. Okay, but we just uh, uh, performed this experiment at a higher time point. Then we found out that cells are much more healthy. They are they become a normal. Okay, so in this scenario, we wanted to know why it is there. Of course, uh, we are performing this experiment, so we doubted our experiment. Maybe something we have done wrong. Okay. We uh, figured out uh, that there is nothing wrong, but this is a, some phenomena. Okay. So, so, in order to understand why the cell become healthy, we have performed more experiment and try to find out what is the molecular mechanism. Okay. So, here again you can see that when there is an influenza virus infection, there will be a this the influenza virus genome will be a lot in the cell. Okay. So, here just I want to say that I will talk more about the influenza virus when we will take up the influenza virus. So, in this uh, in this course, I am going to discuss about the influenza virus. Uh, infection and all those things. Okay, So, let us come back. So, what happened when this influenza virus infect the cell, then there will be a viral replication. Lot of uh, uh, influenza genome will be generated inside the cell. Okay, And this will be sensed by the regi and then there will be induction of antiviral response. And this antiviral response, particularly the production of type 1 interferon, this will activate uh, Another set of signaling which we call it as a jack stat pathway which will the outcome of this jack stat pathway is to make more type 1 interferon, a lot of type 1 interferon and the regi is a interferon inducible gene. Okay? This, this is very well known. Okay? It is like a, you have seen Rantus and IP10. So, Riga is also one of this molecule. It is an interferon inducible gene. Okay? So, that will induce a lot of uh, transcript of uh, uh, Riga inside the cell. And here you can see that when this virus will infect, there will be a viral genome inside the cell. And this will also induce the synthesis of microRNA 485. Okay? I have showed you in the previous slide. Okay. So, this microRNA 485 basically interact with the transcript of regi in order to reduce the expression of regi. Try to understand any immune response should be also damped after some time. If it will be not damped, then that will result to the autoimmune disease. Too much immune response is also not good. So, this microRNA 485 is basically playing a very important role in maintaining homeostasis inside the cell. Okay? So, that is why this is binding with the transcript of regi and then because when the virus is cleared, then there is no need of regi. Okay? So, this will basically bind with this uh, transcript of regi and then it will damp. Okay? So, so, in order to find out why the viral load is reduced after influenza virus infection, we have looked at the genome of this influenza virus. Okay? And we found out that this, this microRNA485 can bind with one of very important gene of influenza virus, okay? which, which is needed in order to make a more copies of genome. It is basically uh, RNA polymerase. Okay? So, this RNA polymerase is uh, consist of three subunit okay? and this micro RNA 485 basically interacting with one of this subunit. So, once it is interacting, then it is degradating as you can see in this schematic. Okay? Uh, here, it is interacting with the, uh, the genome of influenza virus and then it is degradating. So, we have proved this experiment by creating the mutant influenza virus okay, in the lab. We have created the influenza virus. There is a system known as reverse genetic system. 
So, if you use this reverse genetic system, you can create the influenza virus in the laboratory. Okay. So, we have created and we have mutated that uh, site and then we have concluded that this microRNA485 basically targets the influenza virus genome and it is reducing. That is why after some time, uh, the influenza virus uh, is basically since it is uh, targeted, the, the amount of influenza virus in the cell is reduced. Okay. So, what is happening overall? Okay. So, once this microRNA is binding with the genome of influenza virus, then it is less available for rig eye transcript. Okay. And when it is less available for rig eye transcript, then what will happen? There is a more rig eye expression. Okay. So, basically, if you see carefully or observe all this phenomena carefully, you can find out that this microRNA485, okay, this is acting as a double-edged sword against influenza virus infection. One is they are targeting the genome, okay, of influenza virus and uh, checking the replication, okay. Another is this microRNA is since uh, this microRNA is less in the cell because most of microRNA is targeting the influenza virus genome. So, then what is happening? The transcript of rig eye will be more available for translation. Okay? And if there will be a more uh, availability for translation, then what will happen? It will be basically there will be a more expression of rig eye and more sensing of this viral RNA and then there will be a more type 1 interferon. Okay. So, here you can see that the sustained expression, there will be a sustained expression of rig eye, which is currently needed during the influenza virus infection. So, in that way, this microRNA485 act as a double-edged sword. Okay. So, we have proved this thing by creating variety of uh, um, um, mutant uh, influenza virus and uh, finally, we successfully showed this phenomena. Okay. So, here you can see that this microRNA485 is a kind of uh, interferon independent. It is induced by the viral genome and it is, tar it is targeting the influenza virus uh, genome. Okay? And then it is checking the influenza virus. Okay? So, here uh, overall conclusion is that this microRNA485 induces anti-flu response by direct targeting the flu polymerase which is needed for the replication of virus and enhancing the antiviral responses okay, because of sustained expression of rig eye. Okay. There is a one more example. So, in cell there is a one microRNA that is microRNA 324. Okay. So, this microRNA 324 is present in the cell and when there is a virus infection, this virus down regulate the expression of this microRNA 324 and there is a reason why because this 324 can target the uh, again polymerase of influenza virus since it is targeting then this will reduce the viral load okay and this microRNA can also target the negative regulator of JAK STAT pathway. I have told you JAK STAT pathway is basically inducing more type 1 interferon. Okay? So, since it is targeting the negative regulator, so this microRNA again act as a uh, against the uh, against the influenza virus okay? or other viruses. Okay? How? If it is targeting the negative regulator, then there will be a more production of type 1 interferon and type 1 interferon is antiviral. Okay? So, so, this is the situation and here we showed that when there is an influenza virus infection in the cell, then it reduces this microRNA 324. Okay? It is a basically immune evasion mechanism because this microRNA is targeting the influenza virus and then it is basically stopping the replication of influenza virus. Okay? So, virus what it is doing? It is 
evading the immunity, they, they reduce the expression of this microRNA. Okay? In addition, we found out that some of the strain of uh, recent strains of influenza virus, they are changing their sequence okay, in the genome where it is binding. So, if there is a change in sequence, then this microRNA cannot bind. And another very important lesson is that in addition of changing, they are maintaining the amino acid sequence. You know, uh, one amino acid can be encoded by uh, various codons. Okay? So, in that way, they are evading the immunity. Okay? So, if we use this microRNA 324, the stabilized form, this can be act as an antiviral. Okay? And this is also the interferon independent. Okay? So, this is, a, uh, I have talked about the interferon independent processes or molecular mechanism by which the viral replication is checked. Okay? In next session, I will uh, talk about uh, what are the viral factors which is used by the virus in order to evade the immunity. Okay? So, with this, uh, I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much.